Hey guys, welcome back. You know who I really, really hope doesn't get forgotten about in Halo Infinite? The Arbiter. As cool as it was having him back in Halo 5, albeit briefly, it really didn't satisfy the Arbiter itch that I've had for like the past decade. I mean, having him only present for a brief portion of the campaign and him not really having a role in the overall story was to be honest, quite disappointing. And also, the fact that not only did we never see him interact with Chief, even though there was actually concept art made of a reunion during development, but to have the reunion take place in a book was, well, not received particularly well, to say the least, despite how well it was written. So, in the spirit of hoping and dreaming that everyone's favourite Hingehead will make a glorious return and fight alongside Chief in Halo Infinite, I thought we'd take a look at the entire history of the role of the Arbiter, covering every elite who wouldn't serve this one. So leave a like if you want the Arbiter back in Halo Infinite, and you know, to also feed the old algorithm, and let's get this show on the road. So, the first known Arbiter in the long history of this Elite Order dates back long before the formation of the Covenant. Back when the Elites were an independent species, still living and fighting amongst each other on Sanghelios, there existed an Arbiter who ruled with an iron fist. A tyrannical Elite with an unquenchable thirst for power. The Judge King of Kivro. As the name implies, he ruled over the continent of Kivro on Sanghelios, acting as both a king and a judge, a true display of power. However, over time, as tensions between him and his subjects grew, a group of elites agreed that enough was finally enough with this tyrant. These elites, a now brotherhood of Kaidans who ruled over multiple clans on the planet, launched a campaign to usurp the Judge King, a campaign that was ultimately successful. This brotherhood became known as the Swords of Sanghelios, and these Kaidans were the founding fathers of the ancient order of elites dedicated to stamping out corruption of power whenever it reared its ugly head. I gotta say though, it's pretty ironic that when the swords were eventually reformed, it was by the hand of an Arbiter, the thing the group first formed to defeat. I'm sure the irony of that isn't lost on the elites. Skipping forward quite a few years, in 938 BC, members of the Reformist Prophets, who would later go on to form the Covenant, arrived at Ulgathon, an elite colony world. When they sent a group of delegates down to the surface to make contact with the elites, they were met with violence and death at the hand of an Arbiter. This event sparked years of conflict between the two species, leading to an all-out war known as the War of Beginnings. This almost 100 year long war caused by the elite's stubborn refusal to harness foreign attack came to a close in 852 BC, after years of stalemate. Over time, the elites had grown to accept the ideas and concepts of the great journey the prophets had proposed, and decided to finally end the bloodshed by signing the Writ of Union considered by many to be the founding document of the Covenant. Now, it's unknown whether or not the Arbiter that started this war actually lived to see the end of it. A close confidant of his, Pelissar the Strident, represented the elites at the signing, but I can imagine that he wasn't all too happy with the outcome, whether he was dead or alive. Either way, when the two species joined forces, the Prophets embraced the mantle of the Arbiter as opposed to rejecting it, giving them the honour of carrying out the will of the Prophets. In line with their role as the Will of the Prophets, Arbiters were often sent on highly dangerous missions to recruit new members to the Covenant, one such example being the Hunters, or rather, the Letgolo, the individual worms that make up the Hunters. When searching for ancient artefacts, the Covenant found massive hordes of these strange worms, many of which were quite literally consuming ancient foreign tech, which, as you can imagine, as devout worshippers of said tech, deeply angered the Prophets, so much so that they ordered the elites wipe them out. The Arbiter at the time was sent to Rantu, one of the moons of the Letgolo homeworld, to scout this weird species out, and there he learned that they were far more formidable than they appeared. When danger approached, they could transform into strange hulking meta-beings, combining their individual strength into one humongous creature, outmatching anything the Covenant could offer. As such, the Arbiter suggested to the Prophets that the Letgolo who weren't conceiving the foreign attack should be tamed, not wiped out, and then used to destroy those who were. 
a sound strategy that only one worthy of becoming the Arbiter could devise, and one with which the Prophets agreed. After his plan succeeded, this Arbiter was hailed as a hero for centuries to come, and deservedly so. In roughly the 2150s, there existed an incredibly troubled Arbiter, one that was very problematic for the Prophets, and that would spark one of the biggest changes in the Covenant's 3,000 year lifespan. This Arbiter was Fal Shavami, an incredibly powerful and respected warrior and military leader, but an Arbiter with radically different views to his predecessors. Despite his rank, Fal was no believer in the Great Journey. In fact, he outright despised it and saw it as a tool with which the Prophets used to manipulate the Elites into doing their bidding. He believed that the Elites had forsaken their search for honour, replacing it now with power and supremacy, and that if they were to leave the Covenant, the Elites in Sanghelios could be as strong as ever despite the lack of Covenant help. Of course, he was right and quite ahead of the curve in fact, but these heretical beliefs would be his downfall. Despite a prophet's literal pleading with him to come to his senses and put faith in the great journey, Fowl still proclaimed the journey a lie, and thus was officially marked a heretic. When the Prophet sent a literal army of elites, jackals and wraiths and also mega hunters to quell his heresy, Fal cut through the horde with ease, but that was only part of the Prophet's plan. Fal's biggest strength was his honour. It was not only a key part of him, but it was what he fought for so that the elites as a whole could regain theirs, and the Prophet's looked to strike at the one thing that would make him forsake his honour, his wife. A power-hungry elite by the name of Hacker, who was the literal personification of Fal's fears about the elite's downfall, showed up at Fal's house with Ro, his second-in-command, and butchered his wife. To seek revenge for this vile act, Fal met Hacker atop a massive foreigner structure, the perfect arena for a duel to the death. These two warriors, one honourable and the other merely power-hungry, were of equal skill, and in one swift strike they each dealt a killing blow. In 2462, only 63 years prior to their first contact with humanity, the Covenant experienced their first full-scale civil war, the Grunt Rebellion. Now, I have an entire dedicated video on this rebellion, so I'm not going to go into extensive detail here. If you want to see the full extent of a bunch of five-foot-tall sleepy boys, then feel free to check out the video, but to say that they can wreak havoc is quite the understatement. I mean, the Grunts posed such a significant threat, in fact, that the Hierarchs literally had to appoint an Arbiter specifically to deal with them. Because the role of Arbiter was now one of shame, as opposed to honour, the Elite who became the Arbiter planned to deal with this rebellion in the most disgraceful way possible. He ordered the glassing of the Grunts' homeworld, killing billions of innocent Grunts who couldn't even dream of defending themselves. An extremely barbaric act, but sadly, one that worked, and despite their mistreatment, the Grunts once again bent the knee to the Arbiter, the Prophets, and the Great Journey. Ripper Moromi, the 17th Arbiter, was the most savage and ruthless of all Arbiters in known history. He achieved infamy within the Covenant, as he quickly rose through the ranks by quelling rebellion after rebellion. He was responsible for ending the 16th Grunt Rebellion, not to be mistaken with the rebellion that we just talked about, and also the illegitimate reign of the heretical Jackal Prince, Krith, among many others. With each uprising that met its end by his blade, he and his elite became even more infamous for their ferocity. However, this power eventually got to his head. After a failed attempt at usurping his own clan leader, Ripper was sentenced to a year in the Weeping Shadows of Sorrow, a maximum security elite prison on a desolate colony world. But his escapades didn't stop here. He managed to spur his fellow inmates, who initially hated him, to rise up against the guard so he could escape. He did manage to break free, but eventually was caught and beaten to a pulp. When he was eventually freed around the beginning of the Human Covenant War, at a time when an Arbiter was needed more than ever to deal with this new and impending threat, Ripper was the perfect candidate. After hearing of his behaviour in prison, the Prophet of Regret met personally with him to vet him for the role of Arbiter. After ensuring his commitment to the Great Journey was unbroken, Regret pardoned him of his crimes and elected him as the 17th Arbiter, but with slightly ulterior motives. 
He needed his own personal warrior, one that would serve his own will above any other, and Ripper Moromi was just that. Given Ripper's more extreme styles, and also that Regret's election of him as Arbiter kind of came out of nowhere, many of the higher-ranking elites within the Covenant began to oppose the Hierarchs, and as such, rebelled against the Covenant, and Ripper's first mission as Arbiter was to quell this heresy, which he managed to do with ease. His prowess both in and out of battle reaffirmed for Regret that he'd made the right choice, and as such, took him on a mission to activate a mysterious fleet of foreigner dragoon ships. This campaign took Ripper to the human colony world of Harvest, and later to the shield world Etrin Harborage, where the fleet was very close to being activated, but eventually destroyed at the last minute after Ripper fell in battle against Sergeant John Forge. Once again, Ripper let his power get to his head, causing him to be cocky in battle and ultimately die not by the hand of a demon or the parasite, but to a mere marine sergeant and his combat knife. Even as somebody who didn't care for honour, in his dying moments, Ripper surely must have regretted his actions. And the 18th and final Arbiter is our main man, Thelvadam. The Arbiter that many would argue was unfairly forced into his role, and the Arbiter that would bring an end to the Covenant, slay the Hierarch that damned him to the role, and attempt to reunify the elites on San Helios for the first time in over 3,000 years. Born to the noble house of Vadam, Thel rose extremely fast through the ranks, quickly progressing from a simple miner to a shipmaster, and even became a Kaiden of his state on St. Helios. In his early life, he survived many injuries and even multiple assassination attempts. It was clear from the get-go that he was destined for something great. Throughout the earlier years of his career, he was responsible for purging the galaxy of all manner of heretics, from humans to human rebels, and even jackal pirates who he believed to be betraying the Great Journey, but instead had ulterior motives. Little did Fell know that these jackals, who were caught selling weapons to the humans, were actually doing so under direct orders from the Prophet of Truth to help locate human homeworlds. Towards the later half of the Human Covenant War, our boy received the biggest promotion of his life. He was ranked up to Supreme Commander of the Fleet of Particular Justice. In command of the fleet, he was responsible for the death of quite literally billions of humans, both in orbit and also on the ground, but all the while retaining his honour and never falling prey to savagery. In the August of 2552, he took his fleet to their penultimate target, the human fortress world of Reach. He was responsible in large part for the planet's destruction and glassing, but he wasn't done there. When the Pillar of Autumn was seen fleeing from the planet to an unknown destination, he led a small group of ships in his fleet to follow it, leading to the discovery of the First Holy Ring. After confirmation that this indeed was a sacred ring, the mission at Alpha Halo became a religious one, and glassing it was utterly, completely prohibited. The Prophet of the Fleet tried taking control of Thel's military, which led to a power struggle between the two, and arguably caused many of the Covenant's mistakes during the war. When the Flood managed to break containment, spreading across the ring and infecting ships in orbit, Fel enacted the highest level of containment protocols. He ordered all ships on the ring evacuate, and any who failed a clean bioscan on their return to the fleet were shot down. No exceptions. After what had happened on the Infinite Secor, he couldn't afford to take any more chances. As he dealt with the Parasite, as well as several internal struggles, and also setback after setback on the ring, Chief destroyed the Autumn's fusion reactors and obliterated the Halo, and thus, Thel's fall from grace began. His failure to defeat not only the demon, but protect one of the holiest relics in the entire Covenant, meant that he was in for a life-changing punishment. This once honourable, heroic leader was stripped of his rank, titles, and even armour, given the mark of shame and forced to become the 18th Arbiter. From here, he was sent on suicide mission after suicide mission by the Prophet, but somehow, he always prevailed and came back alive. However, with the onset of the Great Schism, he and many of his fellow elites, all disillusioned with the Covenant, joined forces with the humans to put an end to them once and for all. Following the war, he returned to San Helios, still bearing the title of Arbiter, to attempt something that had never been accomplished in the entire history of the planet the unification of all the elite keeps. 
This attempt at peace sparked the beginning of the Blooding Years, a series of civil wars between different keeps and clans on St. Helios, all bearing incredibly different religious beliefs and views. The war raged on for years, and peace talks with other factions and even species came and went, with very little progress made. Eventually, however, Jullumdama's covenant on St. Helios were defeated, which was cause for celebration. But whether all the other keeps and tribes on St. Helios now believed in the Arbiter, or still opposed him, is unknown. Were it so easy. So, that's it. The history behind every single known Arbiter. Named and even not named. I'll keep this outro short and sweet because this is a long video, but let me just say one incredibly important thing before we wrap this video up. Bring the Arbiter back in Halo Infinite! Please, for the love of God! <clears throat> okay, so with uh, that incredibly important PSA now out of the way, I want to give a big thank you to all of my amazing patrons for their continued support, and thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.